Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. I'm in here in my new garage. I just moved. I'm in the process of moving, so I apologize in advance if it's very echoey. My last garage I did a lot with like sound dampening so the audio quality would be good. I haven't done any of that yet in this garage and it'll probably be weeks before I have. So anyways, I apologize in advance for the echoeyness of the video. If it is, I'm guessing it is. A couple videos back, I did uh, a video on the interior modifications in my Tacoma and the gear and stuff like that. And I kind of touched on a lot of stuff and asked you guys if you wanted me to dive deeper. There was a lot of comments asking me to dive deeper in a lot of different areas. The main one was communications, which was kind of evenly split between talk more about your ham setup and ham and what is ham and talk more about WeBoost and what is WeBoost and how's it work. So, those are kind of the two main things I'm gonna be talking about in this video, but I'm gonna be talking about just kind of communications in general. So the first communication device that probably all of you have is a cell phone, which is a great communication tool, and it's a great tool for GPS, and you can text, and you can call, and you can do all kinds of stuff. But if you're overlanding, or off-roading, or getting off the grid anyway, kind of like out there, uh, your cell phone signal may drop, it may be lower, or it may be you know non-existent at all. Uh, but cell phone is kind of a really good communication device. Uh, the second one that I use on the trail primarily is my ham radio. And then the third, which is not really a communication device, but it ex extends your cell phone range is the WeBoost. So those are the main things I'm gonna be talking about, but I'm gonna kind of talk a little bit, kind of like an intro, I guess, on communications and why you might, might care. Uh, so for me, for overlanding or just off-roading or going on trails or caravanning, whatever, uh, I used to, a long time ago, just use those little walkie-talkies, those little two-mile ones. They, they rare, very rarely have two-mile range, though. So if you're very close, those little guys, you know, you just get them at Walmart or Costco or whatever, they work okay if you're very close. Uh, and the thing is, communication is great because both, it's just, it makes... It makes trails much more fun, especially if you're out with friends. Uh, I can't even imagine going on a trail now without a ham or some type of two-way radio because you just talk, you point stuff out, you're making jokes along the trail, you're doing all kinds of stuff. And it just, it's, it's not probably half of the joy, but a good chunk of the joy of going off-roading is communicating with my friends via a two-way radio. So you can't do that with a cell phone. So there's a bunch of different types of uh, two-way type radios, uh, the kind that you can get just at like Walmart or Costco, like I said, or Amazon or whatever. They're just 19 channels, I think. You don't need a license, whatever, and they have a pretty short range, but they get the job done, and if that's all you can afford or if that's all you have, hey, better than nothing. Then you can get uh, kind of a little bit more powerful one. I think it's GMRS. I might be say I might be totally off on that, but you need a license for that, but you don't need to take a test. You just pay, I think it's 50 bucks for like five years and it's good for your whole household. My brother has one of those, though I don't really use that ever because I have a ham. So, and then the next kind of step up, arguably the next step up, but it's kind of, you know, they're not really better than the previous one. They're just kind of different. But the next one, which is probably the most popular out on the trail, is a CB radio. Uh, so a CB radio, a lot of people have vehicle mounted devices with big old antennas and you can get more range that way. So a CB is a good option because you can get more range than the previous devices which are typically handhelds, uh, though you can get vehicle mounted devices for those ones as well. But anyway, CB typically is going to get longer range for vehicles and that's another one that doesn't require a permit or anything. You can just buy them online, ship them to your door, CB radio, you can talk to all your other CB radio guys on the same channels and that's probably the biggest one uh, in just kind of like general off-roading. And then you can get into the by far the most powerful setup which is ham radio. Uh, you do need a license for and there are different levels that you can get. I'll just kind of, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna split this into two videos because I'm going to talk for a while about ham and for those that don't care about ham, just ham radio is cool and it allows you more range, more power, more frequencies. Uh, if you really get into it, you can get a ton of range. You can hit repeaters, which are basically big old antennas that allow you, I mean, they're not actually giant antennas. Well, sometimes they are, but they're anyways, larger antennas that are more powerful that you can basically use that to increase your range and talk to anyone else that is in range of the repeater. Uh, so there's a lot more stuff that you can do with ham radio and it's, the best option, but also kind of the highest barrier to entry. 
Okay, now I'm gonna get a little deeper into ham. Cut. Okay, so I just got done talking a bunch about ham, probably like 10 or 15 minutes. So if you wanna watch that video again, I think I linked it up in a card, or it's probably just the next video I uploaded after this one. So now I'm back into the finishing up ham radio, I guess. So in that video, I talked a little bit about hood mount antenna. I have a little stubby antenna here. It screws off and I can screw on a taller, bigger, more powerful antenna. This setup doesn't have a ton of range, but simplex, which is like personal ham radio to personal ham radio without repeaters, gets like a few miles. So it's plenty strong enough for the trails, but if you really, really wanna reach out, then get a longer antenna. I have a longer antenna that I always keep in the back of my truck. So if I'm actually gonna be going on a trail where I know there's gonna be some distance or I'm meeting up with a, with a group of guys and we're coming from different directions, I'll slap on my longer antenna. It just takes like one minute to do. So that way I have, it probably triples the range of my setup uh, just by putting on the longer antenna. I'll link to all this stuff down below, a shop, amazon.com slash shop slash last line of defense, where it's kind of basically like a wish list that I make uh, to answer all the questions that I always get. So it's all the stuff that I use in my Tacoma is right on that list. Check it out. I have like my EDC items and stuff on there too. But anyways, the list. So that's, that's my antenna. Now come with me and I'll show you the head unit. All right, so this, it's pretty dark in here, but this is the Yaesu FTM 400. There's, let's see if it'll get a little lighter. So there's a couple knobs here where you can change the frequency and the volume and do all kinds of stuff on the display. There is also a hand unit, which I only use like part of the buttons, but you can switch between channels and obviously talk through this. It's on a little extended cable. So the actual ham unit is under here. I do have a speaker under there as well. And that's, that's really my setup. I have it mounted in this little lower area. So there's a little cubby here. This comes with a little L bracket. I took my cubby out, drilled a hole through it, and just mounted the yell bracket right into the cubby. Uh, this isn't the best place for performance of the GPS because it's blocked under some of this stuff, but it still works and everything is good to go. But if you want like optimal performance, you probably wouldn't want to put it down here. You'd want to put it somewhere up higher, like here. But here I like it because it's out of sight. When you close the door, you don't really see it, so people looking in here don't really see what's going on uh, on this radio. So that's where I like it, just because it's convenient and it's out of the way. If we get in here, you can see, it's hard to tell on the screen, but this is grayed out and this is brighter. It's very easy to see in real life. That's like what you're transmitting on. You can have individual volume adjustment for each channel. Uh, this, I actually changed it. I didn't want you guys to know what the frequency I usually use is. Uh, and this is a repeater, the 145.145. So if you're in the Denver metro area, that's kind of one of the main uh, bigger repeaters. It's actually up by me and Conifer. So yeah, that's ham. And I do also, under my seat, keep a handheld in here. It's a little, it's kind of hard to do one-handed. It's a little super cheap Bofang. I keep it in a super small pouch because I don't use it that often. This is the antenna that just screws on. And this is the radio. So this is definitely not one of the better handheld radios out there, but it is one of the cheaper ones. I think it's about 25 or 35 bucks. So this is really all you need to get into ham. A couple hours of studying and a $25 radio. And this will get you going on the road. You don't need a fancy, big, crazy setup. This will do it. Granted, you won't have a ton of range, but there are little kits you can get for this that give you a magnet mounted roof antenna. You can add a, I think you can add like a handheld kind of, you know, separate thing so you can talk like that rather than holding this. So you can add on to these. I don't know if you can add on to this particular model, but some of these Bofang models, maybe this one, you can add on all kinds of stuff to it. If all you want is a handheld or if you're switching vehicles a lot, you can do something like this. And people ask me a lot for install videos. I just don't really like doing them. Maybe I will in the future at some point. But anyways, I have this wired, hardwired to my battery via a Blue C system. Blue C system or Blue C? I don't know, Blue C fuse panel. So it goes to the fuse panel and then to my battery, inline fuse. 
That way my truck doesn't have to be on to turn this on. A lot of times I'll be at a camp waiting for someone or just parked with my car not on and I still want to use my ham radio. So I have it wired directly, kind of directly to my battery but via a fuse panel. So that is my setup down here. I talked about it in my other interior video. These are just some switches for some various lights that I have uh, 3Ms here. And this is a little guy that I also have 3M tape. In my Amazon list, I link to the best 3M tape that will hold the best. I've tried a dozen of them and they've all fallen off except for this one. So I will link to the specific like automotive industrial grade one that I use so you can do the same thing. Anyway, that's my setup. A lot of people think like my knee's gonna hit over here or something crazy, but it, it doesn't. This is all fine for me. So that is my, that's my ham setup. Yeah. And then the next setup I guess I'll talk about kind of, it's not really a setup, is this is a little Garmin InReach Mini. They do have bigger ones as well, but this is the cheapest one and it's the smallest one and it'll get the job done. Really, to utilize the full features of this, you connect it with your cell phone, uh, but you can use it standalone on its own as well. Uh, you can use the GPS, you can use the Garmin maps, which are actually pretty good, but the main thing I'm talking about here is communication. So what this allows you to do is send out a text when you don't have any cell phone signal. It sends a text through GPS. So as long as you have a clear view of the sky, you can send a text on this. There's a bunch of different plans. You can pay kind of per text or you can get unlimited. Anyway, a great emergency tool to have if you frequently find yourself off grid. Uh, these are really popular with just backpackers, hunters and everything, but the overland crowd also can find a great use for this, both for the GPS aspects and also for the emergency texting aspects. So you can text to a phone number, you can text to an email, you can set up groups, you can set up uh, pre-made text messages if you're kind of sending a similar thing quite a bit. So really great tool to have. Not super cheap, but this could come in very handy uh, if you find yourself needing to send a text or an email off grid, which I find myself off grid quite a bit. So it's a good thing to have. Okay, so ham radio is great and all, and you can hit repeaters and you can talk to people across the planet. Awesome, great, yes. Garmin, also really cool. Where there is no cell phone signal, you can still send text via GPS as long as you can see the sky. That's also very cool. But another cool thing is not losing cell phone signal to begin with. Now there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I go camping to get away from my cell phone, and blah, 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 and whatever, that's, that's cool, and I have nothing against that. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, it's not as important for me to kind of disconnect. I live in the mountains, like my house is literally in the mountains, so I don't like feel so like connected to the hustle and bustle of city life or anything that I really need to disconnect. So I love having cell phone service, uh, social media, text messages, I wanna Google something, I wanna research something, something breaks and I need to look it up. Having cell phone signal is way more powerful potentially because you have the whole internet at your hands. The only problem is you don't have service in a lot of areas. Enter the WeBoost. This is the WeBoost uh, something something OTR, which is over the road. So this model up here, let me show you real quick. So this crazy looking thing here, is a WeBoost antenna. I'll get into a little bit more what the WeBoost is, but let me show you my clever way of mounting it first. So this antenna, you can get longer ones, but I just have the short one on here. You basically just want it to be above the roof. So that's where this is. But I don't need it all the time. I'm not going overlanding 365 days a year. Usually I'm not. 90%, 95, maybe 99% of the time, I'm just driving normal roads and I don't actually need this because I already have cell phone signal. So I don't need this thing sticking up all crazy like. I can't go through the car washes, I'm hitting things, whatever. So I don't have this thing up all the time. You could mount it somewhere else a little lower and have it up all the time, but for me I want it up. I want to use maximum potential. So I have it up here. But I have it on this ram mount. So this little ball here, and let's see, it's a little dark again in my garage is a little ball mounted into this channel on my Prince 2 rack. So this is one one inch ball, this is a short arm, this is another ball here, 
with the antenna threaded directly through this ball. I'll link to all this stuff down below. If I forget, just ask me. So anyways, what I can do is loosen the ball and I can tighten it. Uh, it's a li little easier with two hands, but anyways, I tighten it to where it's off of the cab like an inch. So that way I'm hitting bumps and stuff and this is moving a little bit, but it's not bouncing on my cab. It's not bouncing on anything. Uh, and it's pretty much flush with the racks. If I really needed to put something on the rack, I can bend this out of the way, I can disconnect it, or I can put it completely flush. So anyways, this one is the big boy that you probably want if you want to maximize your range. They have one even bigger that's really for RVs, not really practical to mount to a truck. So this is about as big as you can get uh, and still be pretty practical. They have a little smaller one that's just like a magnet mount, but this one definitely will give you the most range. And then that connects to a thingy that's under my seat, which is like the thing that does all the action, makes all the wee boost magic happen. I have that run, sorry, my car is a mess, but it often is, I'm moving and stuff right now. It's going to a little DC outlet I have in here. The outlet I have in here, the little cigarette lighter that I have in the Tacoma uh, center console goes off and on with the vehicle. So I can leave this thing on all the time and it'll just shut off when the vehicle's off and it'll turn back on when the vehicle's on. I do, it does also have a little switch on it. So you can toggle it on and off. I usually have it off and I'll flip it on if I need the extra range. Even with my antenna angled down like that, it still does increase my range. And then we have this little guy, which is the interior antenna. It has a little wire that I have run down through here and then under the seat to the unit. So this one rebroadcasts the signal to a small range, basically anywhere inside of your vehicle. So the big antenna outside gets the signal, this one rebroadcasts it. So the nice thing about this particular WeBoost setup is that that little antenna gives increased cell phone signal to anyone in there. Any service, so you're on Verizon, no problem, you're on at and no problem, T-Mobile, Sprint, whatever, it boosts your signal for anything. You have your cell phone, you have your iPad, you have friends in your car, all of them benefit from the increased signal of this thing. Now we're gonna get into probably the main area of confusion about the WeBoost, and it was kind of an area of confusion for me first as well, and it took some research and talking to them to kind of figure out what's really happening. Uh, so a lot of people will explain it in a weird way that's like, it won't create signal where there is none, but it will boost your signal where there is a signal. And that's like, yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense, but what does that really mean? It didn't really answer any of my questions. It won't create signal where there is none. Yeah, obviously it won't create a signal where there is none. Uh, it's not turning your phone into a sat phone. It's boosting the radio wave or the cell phone signal waves that you're getting from uh, an, ant an antenna, a cell phone antenna. But when they say it doesn't create signal where there is none, that's not completely accurate. Because if you have a cell phone and if you have zero bars, you effectively have no signal, right? You have zero bars. I'm driving further away from the cell phone tower, I have two bars and I have one bar, and now I have zero bars. I have no signal. With the Wii Boost, flip it on, antenna on, whatever, you now have signal. So it is effectively creating a signal where there was no signal. And that was the question that I tried to ask a bunch of people and nobody could answer. It's like, nobody really thought about how the system worked, I guess. So. It does create a signal, an effective signal on your cell phone, where there effectively is no signal. Obviously, I know it's not like, you know, creating a cell phone tower where there is none, but how signals work, how they all work, radio waves, cell phone signal waves, is they get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker, and then you have a little antenna that can pick it up to a certain point. But the signal is going beyond where your little antenna can pick it up, it's just weaker. This will get that signal because it's a bigger, more powerful antenna and it will rebroadcast it to your cell phone. So it definitely works. That aspect of it definitely, definitely works. It creates signal where there is no signal. I have a portion of my drive uh, into work down from my house into the mountains where I lose signal for two miles, I think. Uh, zero bars, can't do anything. With the Wii Boost on, I have three bars driving through the same signal. Uh, I've gone camping to places where I definitely don't have a signal, flip this on, 
have a signal. So it creates a signal where there is no signal for sure. Definitely. Now, granted, you keep going further and further and further away from the cell phone tower, eventually the WeBoost isn't gonna be able to give you a signal and you're gonna lose your signal. That's just, that's just how these things work. So in addition to boosting your signal and creating one where you had zero bars, now where you had one bar, you will have three or four bars, which really means it makes your signal more powerful. It makes your signal faster. It makes your uh, connection to the network stronger. Uh, and this is true as well. If I'm somewhere with one bar and I do a speed test, I, I should do one, but I'm just filming this video right now. Maybe you'll get, you know, four megs up. Flip this on, now you have three or four bars and you're getting like 10 megs or whatever. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. But so it gives you more bars, which in turn gives you more speed and more power. Now, like I kind of talked about a little bit earlier, it's, it's huge, it's crucial. And a lot of these people that are just like, oh, the internet and your cell phone, it's the, it defeats the whole purpose of going camping. Yeah, it could. And hey, guess what? Even if you have a cell phone signal, if you really don't want to use it, you can turn your cell phone off. So by all means, if you want to turn your cell phone signal off, you do you, man. Turn your cell phone off, turn your iPad off, whatever you want to do. But the internet is a very, very, very powerful tool. You're going on a trail, you don't have service, maybe without the WeBoost, but now you have service with the WeBoost, and you're like, oh man, now there's a trail closure, but I don't want to go home, I need to research a trail. Let's Google it, let's look it up. Let's look at these bookmark sites that I saved or whatever. Having a signal can come in hugely handy. Or if your car is exhibiting some weird behavior and you need to look it up, oh, well, this clunk could mean this. Or if you break down somewhere and you need to call insurance or a tow truck, it's, it's just boosting your signal is just, there's nothing quite like it. There's nothing as powerful as a cell phone or a, you know, a LTE enabled tablet. So having signal is important. I love my ham radio, I love my Garmin inReach, but if I could have a cell phone signal wherever I went, that would solve a lot of problems for me. It's still really, your cell phone doesn't take place of uh, like a two-way radio on the trail. I still highly encourage you, A, get into ham, it's very easy, but if not, whatever, get a CB and have all your friends that you go out with also have CBs or if you're in like a local four x four club or something and they have CBs or if they have hams, talking on the trail just, it makes it so much more fun. Not even talking about the survival or prepper or end of the world applications that you could have with a ham radio, but just talking on the trail, hugely, hugely important. I didn't talk about it in my longer ham radio video, but I'm gonna talk about it real quick now. I also have a huge like diamond something 750 antenna. It's like a, it's a really tall antenna. And I have an adapter for that to hook it up to my car. And that's kind of my end of the world survival type deal. Grid goes down, a lot of times the grid will go down. We're getting, we're getting a little bit into uh, like survivalist prepper stuff right now. Uh, so if that's all you, if, if you don't, if you're not into that, just tune out for a bit and then I'll kind of do the closing remarks at the end. But ham radio uh, and a lot of like very bad situations, the grid will go down, the cell phone network will collapse because it's overuse, it's too congested and you can't get through, it's just like meh, meh, meh. In that scenario, especially if you have a group of ham guys, or you kind of have a channel or a frequency that you go on, you can still communicate. And communication is, is huge. Anybody that's really into ham radio will say communication is the most important thing. I don't know if I agree with that or not. I think guns and food and stuff for the end of the world is pretty important too. But communication is hugely, hugely important. And if the internet goes down and the cell networks go down, then you can't communicate. But you still can with ham. So in addition to just being a fun overlanding, off-roading, trail, whatever, ham radio is great. But also if you're the prepper type, survivalist, whatever, or even just like not a crazy doomsday prepper, you're just, well, if something crazy happens, uh, some terrorist attack, they can shut down the cell phone services whenever they want if they need to. If they suspect like a danger could be happening or some communications happening through the cell network, the government can just shut it down whenever they want. But also it just becomes overloaded. Everyone's trying to call their loved ones, everyone's trying to check in and you can't use it anymore. If you have a ham radio, you can use it still. So, great tool, 
Okay, I think I've been talking forever. This video is gonna be like an hour long. So that's, that's my thoughts on communication. That's my comms setup. That's kind of a little bit of theory, a little bit of backstory, a little bit of use case type stuff. So hopefully the video was helpful. It was, and again, it was just a rambling video where I didn't have anything written down, just off the cuff. So I probably missed some stuff. If I did, I'll probably leave a comment or something. Uh, check the video description below for links. I have a shop at Amazon, again, with like, kind of like all the items that I use that I keep pretty much updated. Uh, yeah, if you're, if you're into truck stuff, photos, I have an Instagram, instagram.com slash last line of defense. I have a website where I sell gear and swag and holsters and that kind of stuff, llod.us. I do have a Patreon account as well, patreon.com slash llod. I think that was it, so I'm gonna talk about. Thanks so much for watching the video. Take two seconds, hit that thumbs up button, get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Get on that notification squad, comment down below, let me know your thoughts. If you have questions, ask them down there also. Until next time, guys, take care.